Hello, and welcome to this presentation by the Foundation for the Education and Research in Neurological Emergencies. This educational lecture is titled Managing Emergency Department Headache Patients, Life-Threatening Headaches, and COVID-19 Implications. My name is Edward Sloan. I'm currently Medical Director of the Physician Assistant Studies Program at Dominican University, and I have been an attending physician in emergency medicine at Carl Foundation Hospital. I am Professor Emeritus in the Department of Emergency Medicine at the University of Illinois at Chicago. The content for this lecture comes in large part from the monograph titled Evaluation and Management of Life-Threatening Headaches in the Emergency Department by Dr. Zoda et al. It was published in Emergency Medicine Practice by EB Medicine, February 2019. Please refer to the complete video and audio content for this educational lecture, as well as other individual parts of this lecture via links found at fern.org. You may also refer to the initial podcast and the CME option on the EB Medicine website at ebmedicine.net and specifically at the link listed below. Please note the disclaimer listed below. In general, this information is intended to augment and not replace the clinical judgment that guides the management of any individual patient. The next important secondary headache syndrome is cerebral venous thrombosis. In whom might this occur? It might occur in pregnant patients, those who are postpartum, or those who have a hypercoagulable state. It might show with increased ICP signs. It may produce papilledema and a cranial sixth nerve palsy. It can present with neurological findings stroke symptoms with hemiparesis, or posterior circulation symptoms, including dizziness. It may cause ataxia and or seizures. This is a T2 MR image that shows a venous cerebellar infarct in A and an MR angiogram in B that demonstrates a cerebral venous thrombosis in the transverse sinus. In image C, this is a three-month infarct T2 image that shows resolution of the stroke despite a persistent partial obstruction in the transverse sinus in image D. How do we treat patients with cerebral venous sinus thrombosis? If there's any infection suspected, antibiotics should be used if an infectious etiology is suspected or found including sinusitis or cavernous sinus thrombosis. Anticoagulation therapy is recommended in patients with cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. However, up to a third of patients with a CVT will have some type of hemorrhage at the time of presentation, such that MR imaging should be performed to help exclude small areas of hemorrhage when diagnosing a cerebral venous thrombus. And in general, low molecular weight heparin can be given, then oral anticoagulation. When considering the diagnosis and treatment of emergency department headache patients, especially in the setting of this current COVID-19 pandemic, the following can be concluded. Emergency department headache patients who present with potential life threats can be identified. In order to do so, a systematic evaluation is critical and the electronic medical record can help with this process. Most importantly, subarachnoid hemorrhage can be excluded in patients who present with sudden severe headache given our current diagnostic capabilities. Also to be noted, head and neck infection, CNS infection, and CNS thrombosis must be considered if subarachnoid hemorrhage is excluded as the likely etiology for patients with potentially life-threatening headaches in the emergency department. During the time of this current COVID-19 pandemic, it is possible that common primary etiologies of headache, such as muscle tension headache, migraine, or even headache related to dehydration can commonly be seen in emergency department patients. However, when considering patients with 
potentially life-threatening headache in the emergency department. At this time, it is worthwhile to always consider COVID-19 as a potential etiology of these life-threatening headaches. During the time of this COVID-19 pandemic, besides specifically testing for the COVID-19 virus, there's no need to specifically alter our approach to diagnosing and treating patients in the emergency department with life-threatening headaches. If you have any specific questions related to this educational content, please send an email to fern.org at gmail.com. We encourage you also to go to the fern.org website for more content related to this educational program, as well as other content related to the care of patients who present to the emergency department with life-threatening illness and injury related to neurological emergencies. Thank you.